Okay guys, so here we are. We're going to be taking off the heatsink and fan shroud of the Zotac GTX 1080 Ti Mini. And of course after that we're going to be putting on the Kraken G12, the NZXT Kraken G12, which we're going to pair with the HATI V2 from Corsair. And this will be our new liquid cooling solution uh, that will be used on the Zotac GTX 1080 Ti Mini. Okay, so um, here we go. We're just going to have a quick time lapse of uh, just removing the heat sink and fan shroud, right? Uh, we're using a smaller screwdriver than usual. And it'd be, you know, the, the great thing about the Zotac is that you don't actually have to remove the backplate in order to install the G12, the Kraken G12. So that's a great plus point if you like keeping the backplates on your graphics cards. Okay. So there, I think there are six screws on the back. They are spring-loaded screws, so make sure you don't lose them. And yeah, just going to get that all off. And here we go with a bit of a yank. Um, we should be able to separate the graphics card and the heat second shroud. There you go. That's it. Uh, that's the GPU die, the, uh, the uh, 1080 Ti GPU. And of course, you can see all of the thermal pads. All right, so we're going to go and clean this up. Uh, it took quite a while uh, because the thermal paste just refused to come off. Um, the application is actually pretty good uh, on the standard uh, GTX 1080 Ti Mini. Uh, but there was, of course, a bit of a problem with the uh, thermal paste going into the sides of the die. But, of course, we managed to get rid of most of that, thankfully. And it wasn't too much of a problem. Okay, now you're going to want to use uh, isopropyl alcohol for this step. Okay. On to the next bit where we, uh, once it's all cleaned up and everything, it should look nice and new. Well, not new. I mean, it's going to have a nice reflective look to it like this, nice and clean. You can just about see my face at the top of my head in the reflection. Now, we're going to go ahead and look at the Kraken G12 next. Okay, So, what are we going to do with the G12? Now, first of all, we need to make... Uh, a lot, you know, you need to put the fan in first, right, before you install it, right? Uh, now, of course, I'm doing this in voiceover, so I actually did everything beforehand before I uh, recorded this. However, I can tell you that there were quite a few concerns, uh, simply because the Kraken G12 is actually uh, designed for, you know, standard length uh, GTX 1080 Ti cards, whereas the Mini is, of course, a lot shorter. And so we had a, we had an issue of where we would actually mount the rubber uh, standoffs which are supposed to go in between the shroud and the PCB okay so a bit of experimenting here and there and looking at placements and we did sort of come to uh, you know a sort of conclusion that you could mount them uh, instead of on the outside edge of the the G12 to have it in between the pump yeah I'm just removing some gunk there having it in between the pump and the, uh, yeah. okay, so we're going to have a bit of problems here also as well because we have the uh, motherboard, uh, sorry, the fan pin header, which is the three pin, will not go into the GPU uh, fan header, right? Because it's a mini four pin version of it. Okay, so that's not good uh, because it just, it, it yeah, you can't mount it and therefore you can monitor the fan RPM via uh, your GPU sensors. Okay, so this is something that you need to uh, take into account the, when, you, when you do this. Alright, so now we're just going to have to move the fans around because we're going to have to use a motherboard fan header or to use the second fan header that is available that comes off the pump of the... HATI V2. So we're just going to quickly remove the screws on the fan and this is how you, you know, this is how you mount the fan if you're going to use this particular configuration. You're going to need the fan's uh, cable to be right up flush against the motherboard so that it's not an, un an unsightly, unholy, untidy mess when you um, try to do all of your cable routing later on. Okay, so just remember you cannot use the NZXT fan pin on the GTX 1080 Ti Mini fan header. Okay, you cannot use that together. Okay, so we've got everything all sorted now and uh, let's just 
go through the placements. Okay, uh, everything should be okay right now. And of course, um, again, uh, we have to now we have to figure out how to attach the uh, hum CPU cooler. Okay, of course, I'm pointing out that you actually need a nice soft uh, workspace. Uh, you know, below I'm using a foam piece of foam to do that. Now we're gonna put on the mounting brackets. Okay, uh, which go on obviously on the front. And because of the fact that the uh, also you'll need to put the washers between this the thumb screws, uh, sorry the screws, and the mounting brackets. Okay, so the thing is that because there's enough clearance with the backplate, you don't have to remove the Zotac GTX 1080 Ti Mini backplate. Um, you can just insert the screws right there. They go in easily, no problem. And uh, you know, of course, it helps if you have a magnetized screw head. Um, you know. All PC enthusiasts should have one. Okay, so this we're just gonna quickly go through and run through everything. We're gonna put in the mounting brackets uh, for the uh, H. Uh, sorry, the uh, HATI V2. Right, these uh, the mounting brackets come together with the Kraken G12, not the HATI V2. Okay, so that's this. These mounting brackets are actually are what going are what <laughs> these mounting brackets are going to be what holds the Kraken G12 onto your um, uh, graphics card PCB, okay? So that's what they're used for. And of course, uh, there, it's actually a, a relatively easy process to get them on, although you just have to make sure you line up the screws properly and be careful with your hands. Uh, you know, don't, don't uh, leave too many fingerprints everywhere, such as on the, the GPU die and all that. And of course, be careful not to snap off any capacitors or, and damage any of the circuitry, okay? So once that's done, right, uh, you've got your assembled uh, mounting brackets and everything, okay? So just check uh, where, uh, you know, you want to mount things. Just having a long look here at everything that's been mounted up properly, okay? And uh, yes, now you have to remove the retention bracket from the HATI V2 and you're going to have to mount it onto the Kraken G12. Now the thing is that I had a lot of problems doing this uh, because the tolerances are so, so high that you will have to really, really manhandle it, okay? So it took me about 45 minutes and I finally got it on. And uh, from what I can tell, this is probably the best mounting position for the uh, HATI V2 on the Kraken G12 bracket by having the tubes at the back um, nearest to the motherboard so that you have space to twist around the cables uh, to mount it on to the exhaust fan on your case, okay? On uh, the exhaust fan port on your case, all right? So you gotta make sure, this is an Acetec cooler, that's why it has all of these grooves, just like every other Gen 5 Acetec cooler. So you'll need to really, really force it and really, really push down to get it through. You're gonna have to grind your way in, okay? So on to the next part, we are going to attempt the uh, assembly of the G12. Now we're gonna start off by putting a line of uh, thermal paste across the, the the GPU die, which is a rectangular rather than cir circular. Uh, sorry, rather than a square, which is why you use a, a line rather than a bead. You can just use a bead, of course. Um, if you're going to be using uh, non-conductive thermal paste, that should be fine. So this is me just putting a line of uh, thermal paste here, and yeah, I think I slightly overdid it. Yeah, I think I bit put a bit too much. Uh, you're going to need a lot less than that, probably about 60% um, of what I've put down on the die right there. As you can see, I tried to uh, yeah, tried to get rid of some of it. <laughs> oh, some cutting edge DIY PC enthusiast stuff here going on. Whew. Okay, now on to mounting the actual bracket on two the uh, GTX 1080 Ti Mini. Now because the card is so short, you cannot mount these rubber standoffs where they would normally be, which would be right at the end of the bracket to go to right 
to the end of the PCB. The card is about 30% shorter than your standard GTX 1080 Ti cards. So this is ideally the best placement that doesn't interfere with any of the VRMs, uh, anything uh, critical on the chipset. Okay, so the thing is that because you can't really see where you're placing it, you are going to have to chance it. Okay, there's no other way about it. You're going to have to chance it. And if you can have a second person to help you hold down the... Uh, because it uses double-sided tape to hold, uh, to hold uh, to attach itself to the G12. You can have a second person to actually hold it down for you. I've got my lovely, beautiful assistant um, to help me there. To hold it down while you put it together so that you can actually mount it and attach it with the thumb screws onto the mounting bracket. That'd be great, right? You could do your... It'd be very, very difficult to do on your own. I suggest you get a friend to come over and help you in order to do that so that you can screw everything in. Now of course when you screw everything in, screw everything in, make sure it's just it's on just nice, not too tight. Once you get that firmness when you turn it on the screwdriver, that's it. Okay, you don't want it on way too tight because you're gonna start damaging things if you do. Okay, so that's it. We've mounted it on to uh, the, the the graphic card. It's a bit of a compromise, cables running everywhere, but you know what? Let's put it into the case next. 